Hey, once again, this is Robert from Clean Pool and Spa, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing pool chemicals. This is for uh, newbies. If you just opened up your pool for the very first time, just a fresh fill, or for you seasoned vets who just want a little brush up. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, oh, before we jump into it, I just want to let you know, uh, this is not a tutorial or how-to um, concerning how to add it, where, when, what to do if you overdose or anything else like that. That's for another video. Go ahead and check that out. But, but this one, this is strictly on the chemical side. So, uh, for, for sanitation, you need chlorine. Uh, chlorine is obviously the sanitizer for your pool. And uh, you have some choices. You have what's called sodium hypochlorite. This is a liquid chlorine. It normally comes in gallon containers. Um, and the active ingredient, as you can guess, is sodium hypochlorite, uh, which is also bleach. Bleach is basically watered down pool chlorine. Um, bleach has about 6% sodium hypochlorite and uh, pool chlorine is around 12 to 16 percent. Now, a lot of people have um, successfully chlorinated the pool for years using nothing but bleach. Um, so it, th that's another option for you. Uh, the second one <coughs> is calcium hypochlorite. Now, calcium hypochlorite is a gran granular chlorine or powdered chlorine. Uh, you can get them um, anywhere from 50 to 100 pound containers. That's what I used when I was a pool operator at the YMCA. Um, also, you can get them down to little packs, you know, one pound packs. <clears throat> and they do very, very well. However, there's a couple drawbacks to using calcium hypochlorite. Um, one is it had, does have a pH of 12. So if you're fighting a high pH issue, you may want to consider liquid chlorine. Um, Secondly, uh, if you live in a part of the country that has um, the water is hard, your fill water has, has a hardness to it, uh, you know, maybe 1, 150 or above, you may want to consider sodium hypochlorite as well, the liquid. Uh, also, if you shock on a weekly basis, then uh, you probably have realized that all the calcium settles to the bottom. You have a white... Uh, uh, sediment on the bottom that's calcium set settling to the bottom and so again you may want to use liquid chlorine the third kind is called dichlor now this is a stable the, this is a special kind of chlorine it's stabilized unlike uh, granular or liquid chlorine now what is what is meant by stabilized well it has cyanuric acid in it um, the sun and heat chews up chlorine very, very quickly, and it needs a little help, hence the cyanuric acid. So the dichlor has both chlorine and cyanuric acid in it. Now, uh, I call it a special kind of chlorine for a reason, because you only want to use this chlorine if your cyanuric acid is a little low or for a new or fresh refill. Let's say you drain your pool, you do an acid wash and fill it back up again. Or it's a brand new pool, or if you have an, an above ground pool and you just fill it, you need to get chlorine and a stabilizer in there, so you want to use dichlor. <coughs> so, um, and then you have your chlorine tabs as well. Now, this, the, this is called trichlor tabs. You've probably seen them, you know, they're. They're about that big around. Uh, they look like little hockey pucks. They're chlorine pucks, tabs. They're all the same thing. Um, you can also use them as well. Again, they have chlorine and the cyanuric acid in them. Now, the best way to apply this is to get a little tab float, um, uh, put your tabs in there, and throw it in the pool. Never put tabs in the skimmer. And uh, I'm not a big fan of tab feeders. Uh, I had a couple of commercial pools in Arizona on, on my pool route, and I, again, my opinion is the less moving parts, the better. And these tab floaters, they're very cheap, around $12 to $15, and they can last anywhere from 5 to 10 years. Okay, so next is the pH. Uh, you have some choices on raising your pH. Uh, you can use sodium bicarb, which is baking soda. You can get that in your grocery store. You have uh, the choice of 20 mule team borax, which you can find in your grocery store as well. 
uh, and then you can, you have soda ash, which is really really good uh, because that raises the pH without much happening to the alkalinity or the total alkalinity. Unlike bicarb, you kind of have to be careful in adding it correctly because um, it, it will raise the pH, but if you don't add it correctly, it will raise the alkalinity as well. Um, so next is the total alkalinity is one thing is pretty much bicarb. Um, so, sodium bicarb, you can raise the alkalinity using that. Um, baking soda, but again, it depends on how you apply it because if you raise the alkalinity, you can raise the pH unless you use a certain technique. Again, this video is not for that. I do have a video on how to raise the uh, pH and the alkalinity using bicarb. You can hop on over there and check that out. Lowering your total alkalinity and your pH, you use muriatic acid. Um, well, actually, you have two choices. You have muriatic acid and you have sodium bisulfate. Uh, I prefer the liquid muriatic acid um, simply because sodium bisulfate, you're adding sulfate to the water and that's something you, that you really don't need. Also acid works very, very well. However, word of caution, it is extremely corrosive and literally if you get one drop on your skin, you're running to the faucet to rinse it off because if you leave it on there for any length of time, it is going to burn and it will burn very, very badly. It's one of the most corrosive acids uh, in the world. So be very careful when you're dealing with muriatic acid. Next is to raise the calcium you use, or the calcium hardness, you use calcium chloride, not calcium hypochlorite. That's the chlorine. Calcium chloride is specifically designed to raise the hardness. Places that have soft water, um, I know that when uh, uh, in Oregon, where I was a pool operator, the water was very, very soft, down to three parts per million. It was a plaster pool, it was an 80,000 gallon salt pool, so I had to add calcium chloride to the pool to raise the hardness. Now, the, now the calcium is mainly for plaster and um, uh, concrete and pebble tech pools, not necessarily fiberglass or uh, vinyl pools. Okay. And uh, next is the cyanuric acid. Again, we just touched on that. You can use dichlor, and you have your choice of chlorine tabs as well. Um, now, concerning all of the other chemicals out there, uh, if you have a problem, there's a chemical for it. Uh, what I'm talking about is flux and clarifiers and coagulants, phosphate removers, algicides, uh, just I mean, you, you walk into your pool store and sometimes you may feel overwhelmed. What I told you is about 98% of what you're going to need. Um, I'm not a big fan of algicides. I'll touch on that. However, if you decide to use an algicide, my suggestion is only use a polyquat 60 algicide. There's many less expensive uh, cheaper algicides out there that that uh, uh, one of the main ingredients is copper. Um, an overuse of that can cause copper staining, metal staining, uh, foaming of the water. So if you use a polyquat 60, it is a little more expensive. But again, if you plan on using an algicide, only use a polyquat 60. Period. And for everything else, the, the clarifiers and the phosphate removers and everything else like that, if, if you just stick with the basics, just really master the basics and understand that, check out my other videos, uh, you're well on your way to having a perfect pool, crystal clear and perfectly balanced. Um, balancing the pool is not difficult. In fact, it's very, very easy once you have the right information and once you have all those baselines uh, of, you know, a starting point. Um, I taught, I personally taught many, many, many guards, probably, I'd say, on the upwards of maybe 20 or 25 guards at the Y on how to balance a pool. And this is the test kit that we used um, this is mine, but uh, there was a commercial size of a, of a Taylor K2006 pool water test kit. 
there's all kinds of stuff in there. You can see uh, everything's color coded up here and down here. Uh, it may look confusing, but it's not. It can be your best friend. Now, these were 16, 17 year old kids right off the street, never worked a day in their life. Their first job was a lifeguard at the YMCA. And I would say no truer statement has ever been uttered that if they can do it, I know you can do it. If they can use, if I can teach them to use this kit and they can use it successfully and understand uh, about chlorine, combined chlorine, pH, alkalinity, calcium harness, and cyanuric acid. Well, no, not the cyanuric acid because it was an indoor pool. We didn't use that. Um, but the other ones, they were able to make adjustments. They were able to, to troubleshoot. They were able to see, okay, well, if this is down, then this needs to come up, and I need to add this amount to raise this or to lower this. Um, again, these were 16-year-old kids who never had a pool, who this was their first job, and within a matter of a couple of weeks, they were able to keep that pool balanced and to troubleshoot properly. Uh, so go ahead and check out my other videos, like, subscribe, comment, everything, um, and that's it. So I'm Robert with Clean Pool and Spa. Uh, hope you like the video. Check out my other ones, and as always, stay safe and happy swimming. Bye.